Betty and Barney Hill were my aunt and uncle, and she was a social worker for the state of New Hampshire. He worked for the post office. They were well known in the state of New Hampshire for their civil rights activities and political activities in a very positive way. They were traveling from Montreal through New Hampshire's White Mountains after a brief vacation when Betty spotted a new light in the sky. Uh, curious about what it was, couldn't identify it, they stopped and they looked at this craft as it came in closer and closer. Um, and I say craft because uh, it became apparent very rapidly that this was a large, silent craft that moved in an unconventional manner. Uh, Stair-step pattern, bouncing back and forth, uh, appeared to be rotating at that point. After they had observed it for probably uh, 45 minutes up close, it descended upon their vehicle and caused Barney to have to stop the car directly in the middle of the road. He stepped out of the car with binoculars and looked up at it. At that time, he said that it appeared to be a giant pancake. There was a blue white light emanating from a row of windows on the front. Betty was watching this from the passenger seat of the car. It then shifted location to an adjacent field and Barney walked into the field uh, toward the craft. When he did, uh, it had descended to within only about 100 feet above him. And he looked up through binoculars and saw figures dressed in black shiny uniforms who were looking back down at him. Suddenly, all but one moved to a panel that uh, toward the back of this hallway that encircled at least the front part of the craft that he could see. Their arms went up and something started to drop down out of the bottom of the craft and a red light appeared on each side even though it was circular uh, a red he saw red lights and there was one who remained at the window who was staring down at Barney who greatly frightened him Barney realized that he had to get out of there or he was going to be captured that's how he felt and so he broke away he ran back to the car, screaming to Betty that they had to get out of there or they were going to be captured. The craft then shifted location again and was above their car. And suddenly, Betty and Barney heard a series of buzzing sounds, code-like, and they seemed to be stri striking the trunk of the vehicle. And when this occurred, the vehicle started to vibrate and this uh, sense tingling sensation passed through Betty's and Barney's bodies. Uh, the next thing they knew, they were 35 miles down the road, as if only a moment had occurred. They uh, had very little of recall for what had happened in the interim. They remembered uh, observing a roadblock somewhere along the way. They remembered a fiery orb silhouetted against some trees. It was moving, but they were not moving. And they heard a second series of these buzzing sounds, and it sort of jilted them awake, fully awake, or f back to full consciousness, I should say. They weren't asleep. And they just drove on home, uh, looking for a police officer to report this to, looking for human contact, couldn't find anyone uh, during that time of the night. This was the off season in northern New Hampshire. So when they arrived home, they realized they were later than they anticipated. Also, Betty's dress was damaged. It, there was a two inch tear in the stitching at the top back of her dress, a one inch tear in the thick zipper fabric. The dress was torn from waist to hemline and the hem was torn down on one side. She hung it in her closet knowing that it needed to be repaired. The next time she took it out, it was covered with a pink powdery substance that degraded the fiber of the dress and stained it. So it was kind of a pinkish purple 
look now. It ha was originally blue. Also, uh, the shoes that Barney was wearing that night were so deeply scraped on the toes that he had to purchase new shoes. There was no prosaic explanation for how that could have occurred. The watches they were wearing s had stopped running and never ran again. Also, there were shiny spots on the trunk of their car. And they were in the exact location where Betty and Barney remembered those uh, buzzing sounds striking the trunk of their vehicle the night before. They took a compass out, and the compass needle would spin and spin when it was placed over those spots or near those spots. But if, if they moved it away, then the compass would drop down on other areas of the car, indicating a strong magnetic field. Well, we know that there was a case earlier in Brazil. Uh, we also know that there was a case reported in 1956 and that it wasn't taken seriously by the investigative agency. Um, and since then, several experiencers have come forward and stated that they were actually taken before Betty and Barney. And Betty and Barney's case was simply the one that was released to the public as the result of a violation of confidentiality. This information was never supposed to be leaked. We do have several scientists who cooperate with MUFON uh, and a lot of scientists who are very interested in this topic. Uh, and I am looking for a microbiologist. Betty's dress has undergone scientific analysis in five separate laboratories. No one has ever been able to identify what that pink powder is. We know what it's not, uh, but no one has been able to identify what it is. I would like to find a microbiologist who could take samples of this dress and, and determine whether or not he or she could find anything anomalous or maybe identify what is there. Uh, so far, we have had one laboratory say that this is uh, not a biological substance. We've had another laboratory who believes that it is, that there are proteins on the dress of some type and natural oil that do not belong to Betty. And that's as far as we've come on that in a uh, seed soil assay, seed growth experiment, the pink part of Betty's dress with, that was soaked in water uh, yielded highly unusual results. The seeds grew far faster than they should have and far faster than the seeds uh, from the blue fabric of Betty's dress or from a control sample. I think that the crop circle phenomenon has been swept under the rug. Using its own military to threaten its citizenry.